The first time I saw Ang Lee's beautiful adaptation of Sense and Sensibility on the big screen in 1995, I fell in love with the costumes. But the one that struck me the most from the first viewing was Marianne's beautiful nightgown, which Kate Winslet wears in two key scenes. I've always wanted to make a copy, but I've never seemed to get around to it until this year when I hosted a live stream chat about the film. That was the final push I needed to recreate this iconic gown, and I'm so pleased I've finally managed to pull together all my in-progress photos and make this video for you. I used my Elegant Ladies Closet Pattern crossover gown option as the base for this nightgown, which means there's no need to start drafting from scratch. In the detailed tutorial on my website, which I'll link below, you'll find a list of all the things you need to recreate this nightgown. I made slight modifications to my pattern pieces to get the fuller look of Marianne's bodice and sleeves. First off, because the bodice back is clearly gathered as you see in the photos, I cut the center back piece of the pattern two inches away from the fold to add a total of four inches to the bodice back width. The film gown has a pronounced inverted V at the back, but I opted to ignore that and use my center back piece's gentle upward curve as is. I cut the side back pieces as is, then cut the crossover bodice front pieces as is. I knew I would need to trim down the bodice length because I planned to simply have the front tie closed rather than crossing over but I decided to wait until I had the bodice sewn together before trimming away any excess length. Next, I used my long sleeve pattern piece, that's the simplicity version of my pattern in the photo, to cut out the sleeves, but I enlarged the pieces to create fuller sleeves. I ended up adding four inches total to the overall length of the sleeve, plus three inches to the width. This gave the fullness I was looking for to recreate Marianne's beautiful sleeves. After cutting out the bodice and sleeves, I set aside the smaller offcuts and had a perfect length left over for the skirt. To create the bodice, you'll just follow the instructions as given in the pattern with some minor modifications. Pin the side back pieces to the center back piece, then stitch, clip curves, and iron the seams toward the side. Rather than following the pleating lines given on the shoulder piece of the pattern, I opted to use gathering stitches. Marianne's nightgown has a very soft look to it, so this is a super easy way to get that same look. The next step is to pin and stitch the bodice side seams together. Press your side seams open and now it's time to finish off the neckline of the bodice with self-fabric bias binding. With the scraps left over from cutting out the bodice and sleeves, I cut bias strips to make the binding for the neckline and the double fold bias binding to enclose the waistline seam. It is super easy to make your own binding. To make one continuous piece of binding, you will stitch each strip to the next one at the angled ends. Pin the binding to the neckline of the bodice, right sides together, starting and ending at the center front, then stitch the binding to the neckline, taking up a 5 8 inch seam. Press the seam up away from the bodice and then grade the seam allowance to reduce bulk. To finish the neckline, turn the binding under twice toward the inside of the bodice and then top stitch it in place. You can do this by hand if you're aiming for authenticity, but I did my stitching on the machine since the lace would cover the stitches anyway. Next, sew up the sleeves, run gathering stitches as indicated on the sleeve heads, then pull up the gathers, pinning and stitching each sleeve into its armhole. At this point, you're ready to join the skirt to the bodice, but you need to try on your bodice first to check the length of the front pieces. As designed, the two front pieces are supposed to cross over the body with the right fastening over the left at the side. To get the beautiful V neckline and gathering of Marianne's nightgown, you're going to completely ignore the crossover feature and instead run a drawstring through the waistline seam casing, which you'll make after attaching the skirt. This means you'll need to trim down the bodice front so it fits just beneath your bust and meets in the middle. I marked the desired length, plus the 5 8 inch seam allowance, then trimmed away the extra fabric as you see in the photo. Pin the skirt to the bodice matching center fronts. Pin the skirt front smoothly to the side seams of the bodice and then gather the remaining material to fit the bodice back. Stitch the bodice to the skirt and then use your remaining bias strips to create double fold binding to finish the raw edge of your waistline seam. Next, top stitch the bound waistline seam to the bodice, creating the channel for your drawstring ribbon. Using a bodkin, run the ribbon through the waistline channel, which will gather up the fullness of both the bodice and the skirt. Now all that's left is hemming and trimming to finish your beautiful gown. Turn under the sleeve ends and pin the hem in place. I opted to hem and secure the lace trimming at the same time. First, I made French seams to join the narrow ends of the net lace, and then I pinned the lace in place to the inside of each sleeve over the hem. Finally, I caught the lace while whip stitching the hem at the end of each sleeve. To add the ruffled lace around the neckline, I hemmed the raw ends of the lace, then pinned it in place, matching the center back to the center of the lace and the hemmed ends to the center front at the empire waistline. 
I didn't run gathering stitches in the top of the lace, but simply pinned my way around, making tiny pleats as I went to take up the fullness. Finally, I used overcasting stitches to secure the lace to the very edge of the neckline. To complete the gown, you need to try it on and mark where you'd like the center front neckline to close. The drawstring at the waist secures it below the bust, but you'll want to secure it at the V as well. Sew two lengths of 1 8 inch ribbon, one on each side of the neckline where you've marked. To tie the sleeves and pull in the fullness at the wrist, you'll take two 16 inch lengths of quarter inch ribbon and stitch each to the center of the sleeve seam at the wrist, about an inch from the hemmed end of the sleeve. When you wear your gown, you'll tie the ribbons into pretty bows, as you see my helper do in this video. You now have an absolutely beautiful Regency nightgown or dressing gown to add to your wardrobe. This is a perfect way to lounge about the boudoir while getting ready in the morning or curling your hair at night. And this gown covers a plainer chemise and makes a truly romantic statement at the same time. Enjoy! Music